Welcome back to my Photoshop course for landscape photography. In this video, we're going to cover how to blend multiple images together using concepts that we've talked about in other videos. So this is going to be for things like focus stacks or focal length blending, um, which I'm going to show you an example of both. Now, if you don't yet understand the layout of Photoshop and you don't understand layers and layer masking, make sure you watch previous videos in this course series because those videos cover that. Um, and this video is going to assume that you already know these things before diving in. I don't want to waste any more time. Let's jump right in there. Uh, you'll see first I'm here in Lightroom um, because I want to show you guys how to open your images from Lightroom. A lot of times people will ask questions. How do I get my images from Lightroom to Photoshop? And it's really easy. So in this example, uh, we're going to do a focus stack and then we're going to do a focal length blend. Um, and a focus stack is where you have different images where on this image, for example, I've shot one focus point on the rock and I've shot another focus point on the background because if you'll notice, like on this image, the rock is sharp, the leaves are not. So I've got another image here, uh, here actually, where the trees are sharp, but the rock is not. So I need to combine these two images together. Now, you're going to select both images in Photoshop. So click on the first image and then hold shift and then click on the second image or hold command on Mac or control on PC. You're going to go up to photo and you're going to go down to edit in and then you're going to scroll all the way down to open as layers in Photoshop and click that. You also want to make sure before you do that, that these two images have the same edits applied to them. Uh, they're the same exposure value and all the same edits. So they look completely the same, which these ones do pretty much minus this little spot up here, which is not going to be a problem. All right, that should load your images here as layers into Photoshop, which is exactly what we want. We've got both of our images here. You can see the difference between the images when I toggle the eyeball. First thing you want to do with a focus stack is select both layers. So hold shift, click on both layers, go to edit, and then go down to auto align layers. Make sure auto is checked. I don't select either of the lens correction boxes because I've already done that in Lightroom and hit OK. Now, even if you're shooting on a tripod like I was here, that'll still just align the images and make sure they're perfectly aligned, which is really important for what we are about to do. Now, and it may not look like it, the images moved a lot, but this bottom image moved ever so slightly inwards um, just to compensate for a little bit of focus breathing. Now, I want to zoom in, figure out which image is which. So it looks like this top image here that I'm looking at right now is the trees image. So we'll call this background. I just double click to rename the layer. And that bottom layer, yeah, you can see is where the rocks are looking a little bit better on this bottom layer. So we'll call this foreground. Now focus stack is relatively easy to do depending on the difficulty of image. Um, I personally like Helicon Focus for some of the more uh, complicated blends, but it's something that's simple like this can easily be done in Photoshop here. Um, I'll link the video to Helicon Focus if you do want to check that out, but no need if you have just simpler blends like this. Now, what we want to do is use layer masking to um, mask out the foreground from the background layer, if that makes sense. When we mask out the foreground in the background layer, it'll allow the foreground of the front layer to show through. I know that's a lot of foreground background layer mask talk, but let me show you what I mean and hopefully it'll make sense. So what you want to do is create a layer mask here. Our layer mask starts as white. If you wanted to invert it and start with black and do the opposite of what I'm doing, you could totally do that as well. And actually that might be what I'm going to do here. Let's go ahead and, and command I to invert. So now remember from last week's video on layer masking, anything that's black is concealed. So nothing on this layer will show through. We're seeing completely this bottom layer here. We'll go, we will grab our brush, 100% opacity. I'm going to go with a white brush here. Um, and we're going to make sure it's 0% hardness, nice and big, maybe not quite that big. And then we're just going to paint in everything into the, the layer mask that we want on the background layer, which is these background trees. So I'll just paint through that. I'm going to grab everything in the background here and I'm painting. It doesn't look like a lot is happening, but um, trust me here because these images look so similar, you can't see a huge difference. But um, now you can see when I toggle this, we have this background from this top layer. Now you can see we've masked in the sharp trees and we have sharp rocks as well. Um, 
because when I see when I hide this layer mask, you can see the not sharp rocks and I'm holding shift to hide that layer mask, by the way, if you want to hide it and look at it. But otherwise, just trust the process and know that we have sharp rocks in the foreground now and sharp trees in the background. Now, usually you'll want to go in and make some refinements here with a little bit smaller of a brush. I like to toggle this um, and just see what it's doing, see where else I can increase the sharpness. You know, maybe I don't like the glare that it's adding on these rocks, so I might go in with a black brush, make my brush a little bit smaller, and paint it out of some of these areas where I don't want it. And you always want to check to see which image has it sharper. And actually now I pressed X to switch to white. I'm noticing that this background is a little bit sharper on this back image. So I might just paint in through this just like this and you can really paint to your heart's desire here as much or as little as you want you just want to make sure you're blending things in a way that looks seamless you know you wouldn't want to uh, on this photo like a water shot it's going to be pretty easy to do but you want to make sure that you don't I'm trying to think something like this right here see where i've kind of created this texture i don't want to do that i want to make sure everything looks smooth and seamless here i'm going to click and drag around everything is looking pretty good always want to zoom in and I'm holding uh, you can command plus or minus to zoom in or out or if you press space bar and then command or that'd be control on a PC you can drag to the left to zoom out or to the right to zoom in so that's a really nice way to get around your image and hold the space bar to get the hand tool so you can do this to your heart's desire you get the point one thing you do want to make sure press the alt option button um, and look at your layer mask afterwards I want to get rid of stuff like this where it's partially there um, you can see kind of that little gray. Just get rid of all that uh, wherever you can just to make the blend a little bit cleaner. Then go back through and do this as long as you want to nail that perfect focus stack. That is the way that you manually do a focus stack here in Photoshop using layers. Let's talk about a focal length blend. Now I've got this photo here. Uh, I don't do this very often, but I know it's a concept that a lot of people are interested in doing. Uh, the problem that I have with this photo is the mountains seem so far away. I'd like to make the mountains bigger. So I took another photo at a greater focal length. I want to say this was shot at like 17. This was shot at like 35. You can see the mountains are a lot bigger. So I need to blend these together. It's going to work the exact same way. Just a few different things you need to keep in mind. So I want to show this top layer here. This is obviously our background. Um, and I want to drop the opacity. And we're not going to use auto align on this because obviously we have different sized images. So we can't really use auto align that well. I'm going to go to about 50% opacity, grab my move tool, then I can move the mountains around. Now, what I want to try and do is find a break point where I can easily blend these in. And that break point is going to be on this brown right here. It's low detail. It's far away. So that's going to be the best spot to blend things in. So I want to just line these mountains up. You can see I have this low opacity on this bottom layer. I want to line up the brown part right here on both images. So I'm just going to drag this over just like that. Now, I got to decide which portion of the mountains I want, probably something like that. I'm going to go back to 100% opacity. I'm going to hit command minus to zoom out once or twice, just give myself a little bit more space to work. Now, it's already looking pretty good, but you'll notice that the foreground here just doesn't look right uh, because this kind of fades into weird backgroundness. So what we're going to do is just mask that out. It's pretty easy. We'll use the brush tool again and we will grab a layer mask um, and actually let's you yeah let's let's go ahead and use the brush we can make this happen with the brush um, and we're just going to grab the black brush here 100 percent opacity we'll make it pretty big in size and i'm using the diagonal to the delete key is the uh, closing bracket that increases the size the opening bracket de uh, decreases the size and i'll just go in and i'll start to paint this away and i'm going to make this a little bit smaller somewhere about in here and you can see I'm getting too much bleed over into the sky right there so I'm going to undo so you can either make your brush smaller or drop the hardness I might uh, or increase the hardness rather I might try like 25% hardness with a little bit smaller of a brush now you can see that's going to look a lot better now you can go in here touch this up press x if you want to get white and touch up the opposite just like that just paint right on in, make that look as seamless as possible. Just like that, I'm gonna hold Alt and Option. You 
you can see this is looking pretty good. I just want to touch that up like I did before. I don't want anything in the 50% area um, in that like kind of grayish black. I'll just touch this up. And I don't think there's any image down here, but we'll touch this up as well just to make the mask full, just like that. Load in. Already, just like that, we just made the mountain so much bigger um, and it looks relatively seamless. I mean, when I zoom in, you can't tell that I did that other than you obviously know because you watched the video. But if you didn't watch this video, I don't think you'd be able to tell that I blended that in. So this is easy to do on things on images like this where you have a nice seamless transition. It's a lot more difficult when you've got things like trees and other things that are hard to blend. But you can certainly do it in a place like Death Valley where we have just dirt and a very seamless transition. Um, so that would be called a focal length blend. So you can see just how powerful using layer masks and brushes are. Um, and there's a lot more things you can do here. You know, if you shot an image with a sun star or a great sunset, you wanted to combine it with the light, you would do it the same way. Um, there's so many different reasons why you would want to combine images to overcome limitations of the camera um, or even limitations of time and the natural world. So you can do a lot with it just like this, the same way, um, using just these simple steps. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and that is, this is certainly one of the reasons why a lot of people jump into Photoshop and learn Photoshop is to be able to combine images like this. Um, and I know a lot of you guys out there are photo purists, one shot people, you don't want to have to take more than one shot. Totally understand. Um, I look at this as a way to overcome limitations of the camera. For example, a focus stack. We can't get the whole scene in focus. This helps you to overcome that limitation. Focal length blend. When, you know, when you're out in the field, everything looks big. Everything looks really in your face. You take a picture with a ultra wide angle and everything is really small. So this overcomes kind of the limitation of a camera lens um, by doing that. If you guys have any questions about this process, let me know down below in the comments. Um, otherwise, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We'll link next week's video here at the end of the video um, once it comes out. Otherwise, thank you guys so much. And we'll see you guys next time.